Okay, now let's talk about rejects and problems that you'll come across when you're doing these projects. So, for example, let's change our data. And let's say we know that employee ID is a column that is defined as an integer. So now let's say I make a new row and I mess up. And I, well, first of all, let's say that this is Tom Parsons, for example. And then I say, well, I this should be a 3, but I'm going to put an R in there just because the data is, is not is dirty, that's not accurate. So I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to rerun the same job and see what we get. So I'm going to click on run. And remember blue means that the system or the engine is processing the orchestrate code. And in a second we should see the output. And also if you want to check the details of when it last ran, of course you can always come back in here, you'll see 903, there it is, finished the job test, and it had no error messages. Okay, so there is in fact a clue that we sort of overlooked here. Take a look, there's an, although there's no error on our screen here, and there really is no error here, we are getting warning messages that are important. Take a look, it says import unsuccessful at record 2. And more than that, it says we had, here let me zoom in so you can see this better, field employee ID has import error and no default value set. So this is not surprising, but we're not handling it, so we need to determine what to do when there's a problem. And remember earlier we had right-clicked on our CSV file and then we had gone to, uh, when we let go, we had created a, a link. Well, there's various kinds of links. We just created the most simple link. We, if you right-click on the link, you can see this. Um, the other options we have are convert to a reference link and convert to a reject link. The link we have right now is called a stream link because it's streaming the data from our input off to our output. But what we want to do is find out what's going on with when there are rejects. We, we don't want to drop rejects. So uh, we're going to right drag from CSV and we're going to just sort of put it here, let go here. And what we want is another file. In this case, let's drag over a sequential file. Same as before, we want that to snap on top by dragging it over the he head of the arrow. And then take a look at what's happened here. We have this first link was a solid line. That indicates it's a stream. But this dashed line indicates a different kind of link. In this case, it's a rejects link. And you can sort of get that from looking here. You can convert it to a stream. And watch what happens if we try that. We're going to get an error. It says the source stage cannot support any more output links. And if you tried to right click and change that to a reference link, you would also get an error message because that is not possible. And so this is where you need to know the different kinds of links. So as I said before, if it's a solid line, you have a source, a stream link it's called. So from your source to your target is a stream when solid. And if it's dashed like this, it is a reference link. But if it has double dashes, then you're looking at a reject link. And indeed, we see this is a little bit difficult to see because you need to zoom in a bit more to, to see the double dashing. But that is a rejects link. And a lot of times, if you, without zooming in, you can just, like I said, right click and see the other options. So um, that way, by process of elimination, you can figure out what it is. In any case, we want to rename this. And a simple way to do that is I'm just going to call this rejects. And the same with the link here, which is in a bit strange location, so I'm going to move that down here. Same thing, I'm going to right click in this one and call it rejects. And you cannot repeat the name of a stage, so you can't have two stages with exactly the same name for the link, or sorry, for the name of the stage, but you can for links, that's okay. And so I tend to name these the same if I don't rename the link in or out. Okay, now, double clicking on the rejects link, this is just a standard sequential file like we've been dealing with before. So same thing here, we want to go to file, we want to go to browse for a file, and I'm just going to create a new one, unsurprisingly called rejects, but do include CSV there so you don't get, uh, so it's very clear what's going on. Same thing as before, first line is column name, so it should be set to true, and again under the format tab, go to field defaults and null field value, and just set that so that we don't have trouble with that. Uh, nulls, if you have any nulls involved, which we don't in our file yet. Alright, now, let's rerun this and think while this is running about what you would expect to see. I'm just going to try to make that a little straighter. Sometimes you'll notice too it's a little difficult to do that, and if you kind of 
mess with it enough you can, but uh, in this case it really doesn't matter. I'm going to have them angle out like that. Okay, now we'll compile this. And okay, now good. We first we got our first error message. So when you get your errors uh, like this, the first thing to do is click on show. First of all, is read it obviously, and it says CSV dot rejects is not allowed with the current setting or lack of reject mode property. So we're missing a, a something, and it says press the show error button to highlight the stage to which the error relates. So when you click on show error immediately the CSV stage will highlight. In this example it's not particularly difficult, but if you have 15-20 stages you'll definitely find that to be useful. And sometimes you'll see a more ic icon, this, this more uh, button will be lit and you can get the actual error message issued by Orchestrate. Okay, in this case I'm just going to click on close, we're going to open up the CSV file, and we need to determine what happened here. In the case of data that needs to be uh, that you want to reject, you very often need to, especially in these, obviously in this case, you need to tell the system where <coughs> what to do with rejects. And the place to do that is under the Output tab, and then go to Properties. And you'll see under Missing File Mode is Depends, and then right beneath that one is Reject Mode. So by default, it's set to Continue. And continue, you can see here, it's, uh, we'll simply discard any, reje any rejected rows. And that's exactly what happened. Because we have three lines, but it told us we only had two output. So that's exactly what it's doing. In the case of fail, though, um, the whole job would just stop. If you want that to happen, that, that may be the case, especially if you need to do some data uh, quality uh, checks or can't allow any problems in the input you might want to do that. But in our case, what we want is to set this to output. And output will send any rejected rows down a rejected link, which we just created. So we need this to say output. So I'm going to set that to OK. And I'm going to recompile this. We should not see any errors. We did not. And now if I click on Run, we'll see the system start processing. And then notice what we have two rows went directly where we wanted them to, and then one row did not. It went to the rejects. It's, it's just exactly what we wanted. Now, another th trick here is that if you double click on rejects, and we saw this before, you can click on the view data and click on OK, but notice how long this takes. This is so slow that if you're, especially as you're first starting out, you probably want to handle this in a, in a slightly smarter, faster way. And uh, there it is. That's that's essentially what we wanted to see, and that's uh, that's great. Uh, it's a little strange looking, but okay. Th there it is. So if we click on OK, we get that. Now here's a faster way to get to that output. If I drag the window off to the left, and then I open up Notepad++, you can go up to File, and you probably know what's coming. I can open up the out.csv and the rejects.csv. And by doing that, look at this. So there we go. Rejected, Tom Parsons, and R. If I were to, let's say, add a new, uh, and then the same thing, by the way, applies to out. So right, we have all the lines, all the rows that were output are right here. And as soon as the data changes, Notepad++ will pick up on that, and you can um, immediately see the output, essentially, in Notepad++ without waiting on data stage to, to grab the data. So let me give you another example. If, if I go uh, back to our employees and we make a brand new row, let's call it um, uh, Yelena, um, uh, let's say, Smithwick, why not? And then we say that's uh, three, or four, maybe. Okay, if I rerun this, first of all, we need to recompile it, um, and we're going to run it. And then wait a second for that to process. And all the processing statistics, by the way, are in the director, so you can see all that. So this is this is what you would expect. Three rows were properly handled and sent off to our CSV two, our output uh, out.csv, and then one went to the rejects. And just to clarify here, I'm going to uh, make this out so it's not so um, confusing. Make the out match the out. And now watch this. If I click on out the tab. Um, we're going to see this option in Notepad++ that says, hey, this file changed, do you want to reload it? And yes, we do. And there we go, it updated, and the same with out, um, so the same, actually that was the rejects one, this is the out one. They both will update, and sure enough, Im we get essentially immediate feedback. Now, if you're doing this a lot, you do not want to 
be prompted each time to uh, to op to reload that file. So to fix that, all you have to do is go up to settings, and then go down to preferences, and then you'll see miscellaneous listed here, and there's an option that says update silently, which is right here, and that's really what we want. So that way, um, all you have to do when there's a change made. In fact, let's go ahead and do this. If I make a brand new row, and we'll call it Bob, uh, Bob uh, Java, how about, <laughs> and five, and now I rerun this, and we're about to get, uh, again, additional data in, just like we did before. But, th but the trick is, if you're inside, if you're already inside Notepad++ on a given tab, um, it w that tab will not automatically update. You need to leave Notepad++ and then click back into Notepad++ for the, for the changes to ha have been made. And so if I go to Out now, it'll be here. And, and if I go to Rejects, that'll also be here. So in other words, if you're in here and you make the and you click on Run, um, this won't be updated automatically. You need to leave, so you need to activate another window, and then come back, and then you'll get the updates um, listed in Notepad++.